Heavier monofins deal way more damage to fabric mermaid tails. I'm looking at you, Mer Taylor. Hello, my friends and fishes, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you guys my top 10 tips for fabric mermaid tail users. If this topic seems familiar, this is a remake of a video I made four years ago. I will link to the original video so you can see exactly how much somebody changes in four years. It's a little scary. And without further ado, let's dive in. Tip number one. I hate that I even have to say this, but always be gentle with your mermaid tail. Probably should have gotten a tail to use for this as a demonstration. Everybody say hello to Chester. Warm welcome. <laughs> this tail is so big. What is going on? Lord, hey, okay. We're professional over here, aren't we? So tip number one was of course, always be gentle with your mermaid tails. I cannot tell you as a tail maker how frustrating and hard to watch it is when I see people rip and pull on their mermaid tails, even if they're not tails made by me. Just don't do it, okay? It's fabric. Don't, I'm not gonna do it because I just can't bring myself to do it, but you do not need to rip. You do not need to pull. This is how you pop seams. This is how you make holes. Let's, let's not pretend for a second that we don't all know somebody who does this. If it's not you, stop. Be gentle, be very nice. Take your time putting your monofin in. Take your time putting your tail on. This isn't a race, this isn't a rush. Just take your time. Tip number two, always put something soft in between your tail and whatever surface you're on, even if that surface is also a soft surface. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but like have a towel that you know is like the towel that just doesn't do damage. Like I have a Little Mermaid, obviously I have a Little Mermaid towel, but I have a Little Mermaid towel that I use and I lay that down and I will always put my tail on with that under my behind if I'm on a really rough surface. Now, sometimes I'm lazy at the pool and I'll just put my tail on right at the edge of the pool and just kind of roll in and that's fine too. But like, honestly, if you want your tail to last, you really do need to put a mat of some kind or a towel of some kind underneath your tail so that you always have a buffer between surfaces. Now, I will just asterisk this and say, um, avoid using sticky mats like a yoga mat. It seems like maybe it would be a good idea to have a sticky surface, like, you know, want a slippery surface because you don't want to fall or hurt yourself or anything but a sticky surface creates kind of a like a rubbing scuffing like almost like a smearing effect sometimes if you do it quite fast it's kind of like if you've ever gotten like a burn on yourself from like accidentally rubbing your arm too hard on a rubber surface like it's kind of like that sort of like at a gym or something you ever done that so the heat and then the friction it just it creates a bit of a mess so i've had it happen actually more than once with mermaid tails of my own before i realized what was going on so i nixed all of the yoga mats and i use a really nice soft very soft very very thick foam mat now, so I definitely prefer that or a towel. Tip number three, just something you should be aware of really. Heavier monofins deal way more damage to fabric mermaid tails. I'm looking at you, Mer Taylor. But the heavier the fin, the more damage you're likely to do because the like the less control you actually have over that fin and where it's flopping and what it's doing. And also monofins with very obvious ridges, again, that's like most of the mermaid monofins on the market with, except, with the exception of maybe like the Mahina and the fish fin. Every other, I'm looking at my collection of monofins over there, but every other one does seem to have have like fairly obvious ridging, like ridges. So what happens is those ridges make more contact with surfaces and therefore get the scuffing and the pilling and the, the damage faster than the sort of indented areas. So what'll happen is if you have like a really dark design for a mermaid tail, all of a sudden you'll start to notice like, hey, what are these lines appearing on my thing? Like there's like these light lines, like what's going on? So that's what's happening there. It's just the, the areas that are of a higher nature are having more contact with, with the surfaces that you're on and are just aging basically faster. Another thing you want to avoid is monofins with super sharp edges. The sharp edges are kind of a no-no. I talked about that in the last version of this video. Some monofins are going to be okay if they're more of like a rubbery silicone kind of a nature. Sharp edges aren't going to necessarily be an issue. But what I mean is like if you're going to cut down a monofin to a mermaid tail shape, make sure that you file the edges really well so that you don't have a lot of really sharp edges because those will just poke holes right through your mermaid tail, no problem. So one extra like bonus tip for monofins that are like mer tailors that do have the very obvious ridges is if you can find a design that actually has a pattern on it that goes with those ridges it will help for it to be less noticeable like i always try to design my tails with any lines or detailing on them that kind of goes as best as possible it's not always possible in every case in most of the instances i try to follow the lines of the monofin with my design so that that way when wear and tear happens it's just not 
you know, quite as obvious. Okay, point number four is one that is so unbelievably obvious and yet just nobody really takes it seriously. Stop standing in your mermaid tail. Stop kneeling in your mermaid tail. <laughs> Stop scooting in your mermaid tail. You know what I mean? The butt scoot. The butt scoot from pool to pool, down the beach, rolling around. Just stop it. The mermaid tail needs to be treated very nicely. And, and scooting and scuffing and rolling around and standing and jumping. Why are you people doing this? Stop jumping in your mermaid tails. Stop jumping around needlessly. You're gonna hurt yourself. Like even if you're on a really soft surface, the only time that you should really ever stand in your mermaid tail and obviously making sure that you're safe to do so is if you wanna make some minor adjustments to your mermaid tail and you're on like a really soft surface. But even then, a soft surface does not guarantee you're not going to scuff your mermaid tail. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but you have to remember this is a dark design printed on white fabric. So what's going to happen when this gets damaged? That's going to start showing through. So you have to remember that. And it's not just my tails. All mermaid tails are made like this. Tip number five. Wash your mermaid tail out after every swim. Please don't be that mermaid who just leaves it in a bag for like a week and a half and is like, oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> no. Use gentle detergent of some kind. It can be swimsuit specific or just a gentle detergent that you'd find at any like grocery store. Use warm water. Don't make it scalding hot. Warm water is fine. And unless your tail maker specifically says that it's okay to put your mermaid tail in the washing machine or in the dryer, please don't do it. Oh my gosh. The reasoning behind this is because everybody always asks like, oh, why not? Is I have for my, for me, I have a much older washing machine. Okay. It eats up everything on a good day. I'm lucky for my jeans not to wrap themselves around everything, okay? But my tail, for example, on Chester, we have so many extra fins and extra things that could potentially get snagged or ripped or damaged. Like, even if you put it in a laundry bag, you have to be darn sure that that bag's not gonna somehow open because don't they always? Drives me crazy. Just be extra careful. You know, if it's maybe a tail that doesn't have a lot of extra fins and your tail maker says it's okay, then maybe, like, I'm not gonna lie, I have put Chester before into a laundry bag on low in the dryer after washing it because I had to get things rolling. I had to get going. So I did do that for a little while just to just to keep the, the drying process. Like there's so many fins. This thing takes like two or three days to dry. Like it's crazy. Tip number six, remove stains immediately after you swim and wash out your tail. You gotta get on it right away because otherwise like if you let that stain dry in your tail it's probably gonna set and is either gonna be really difficult to get out later or it just won't come out at all so the first thing that i do is i would wash out my whole tail with my gentle detergent i would assess the situation and then i would bust out my shout triple action which is what i love to use i've heard people use other things but shout triple action is just what i've used you can always check with your tail maker if they've got a preference as well and then i spray the spots that need it i let it sit for a minute or two and then i go in with my toothbrush or a nice soft face cloth will also and you get kind of like a circular motion going and do small bits at a time and just kind of work through it like it's time consuming it's a pain in the butt it is worth it to maintain your mermaid tail like this tail I've had to stain remove a lot of stains off the front especially because my underbelly is really a light color like it's a really light color and this gets so dirty when I go to the lake or to the beach and I'm like smearing myself all over rocks and stuff and I come back and it's like it's just brown and <laughs> which is so then I'll have to go in and you can see like the stains do come out but you got to get on them right away and like if I didn't make it clear before like your tail should still be wet when you do this tip number seven dry your mermaid tail out completely we're talking bone dry before you store it. Love of all that is good in this world. Do not store your tail wet. Am I speaking from experience? Yes, I am. The smell is bad. Don't do it. Store it only when it's dry, especially if you're going to store it in like a plastic bin of some kind or a plastic bag of some kind or what. Like, please please, 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 please make sure that your tail is completely dry before you store it because I promise you it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It gets gross fast, guys. Tip number eight is to repair any damage before it gets worse. So I mean immediately, like as soon as humanly possible, repair damage before it gets worse. So for example, I took, I took my baby to the lake and um, yeah, just also really be careful of your extra fins. Let's just tack that on to this. Say that's an extra tip. Just be really careful especially if you've got heel fins or like shin fins but especially heel fins or a really long dorsal please make sure that you're not 
accidentally like sitting on it when you go to kick your feet out to maneuver your body. Oh God. So I put a pretty heavy duty rip um, into my heel fin, my beautiful baby heel fin. It's so sad. It's so sad. I was so mad at myself because I heard it happen too. Like it popped. It was so loud. <gasps> But the thing is, if I'd left it, the so it had already started to unravel a little bit, because that's what happens. Like, it's sewn, it's thread, it's fabric. Like, this is what happens if you don't treat it right away. So by the time I got home, because I wasn't going to stop shooting, like, we were still had lots of photos to take and lots of video to take, so we were still there for a while, because this happened pretty early on into the thing. Um, but when I got home, after I washed and I dried, I trimmed everything, uh, and then I just doubly went in and hand-stitched. I think I may have actually attempted to use my sewing machine for part of this. Yes, but I did the like the inner stitching by hand. So if you're not somebody who's super like comfortable doing the sewing, I mean, you can check with your tail maker and you can see what they would suggest for you. I had one client once who had popped a seam uh, in the middle of their fin and I actually did like a live call with them and sat with them. and was like, okay, let's, we're going to do this together. You got your thread, you got your, <laughs> your thing. Like, this is how you do it. This is what the plan's going to be. To be honest, like a little bit of sewing skill is a useful thing to have, especially if you're going to enjoy fabric tails. Frequently, it's good to have a little bit of sewing skill and there's lots of tutorials and stuff online as well you can look up sewing tutorials for the different kinds of stitching and things that you may need to do who knows maybe if enough of you let me know that that's something you want to see maybe I'll even make a little video on how to do it uh, it's just useful to be able to do a little bit of hand sewing like keep a, a needle and thread in a little case somewhere in your apartment do the thing tip number nine is going to be to use a pill shaver so this is my pill shaver this is my baby pill shavers are amazing and so what you can use this for is any little pilling and if you don't know what I mean by pilling. It's like the little dots, the little bumpies that you'll get. You get them on clothing. Like go get a t-shirt that you've had for a couple of years and take a look at it. And it's those, the fuzzy stuff, the like pilling. It's just like little pills. That's what they call it, right? It has three blades that spin around um, under a little metal mesh bit here on off. It's got the little trap at the back to catch all the fluff, which you should make sure you empty periodically. Please just be really, really careful when you use one of these because these can actually make more of a mess <laughs> sometimes. So they can actually put holes because it's their blades that are in there that are spinning around So I've done that unfortunately before where I was pill shaving and I was being impatient and I wanted it to go faster So I pressed a little bit too hard and put a hole in my mermaid tail You can find these basically anywhere you can find them on Amazon You can find them at Walmart. You can find them at save on foods I've seen them in you know, I've seen them everywhere dollar stores have them um, Do always a little test to make sure that you've got a good one I do recommend like I didn't you know break the bank with this or anything, but I did try to find one that was going to be a little bit nicer for what I needed it for, so, but they're great. All right, my last tip is I have a very specific way of folding my mermaid tails. I, uh, this is actually the Marie Kondo <laughs> method of folding mermaid tails. It's super handy and it means that you can actually have a lot more packed into a small space. So if you have to travel with your mermaid tails, I'll do this in my like in my bag. I'll have them all folded up just like a little file folder system. It's fantastic. And of course, we all know we want to have zillions of mermaid tails. So you got to have lots of room. I no longer have all the space that I need. And, and to be honest, hanging them on a wall, I just I don't have the space and I don't have room to just hang them anywhere else in my apartment so folding them all up nicely it also allows me to see what tails I have and it just keeps everything nice and organized okay so that is it for today's video I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in this is we're getting back to the content my dudes we are getting back to it if you guys have any old videos of mine that you'd like to see me redo and add to with new information that I've learned on my journey please leave me a comment and let me know I mean anything anything you want to see me do that's mermaid related that you've always wanted to ask please comment I do read all of my comments I reply to as many as possible. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to join the pod. Hit that bell notification as well so you never miss an upload. And otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and happy swimming. Bye.